So 2.8 is problem solving with two-step equations. What we're doing is we're taking what we did in 2.7, the solving with multiplying and dividing, and what we did in section 2.6, the solving by adding and subtracting, and combining the two together. And you could write out the rules a couple different ways. So I'm just going to like write out rules. And I'm doing a little bit of overkill because I really could just say you always have to do the adding and subtracting part first. So if you want to in your brain, just know that what we were doing in 2-6 where you have to like subtract 4 from both sides or add 7 to both sides. You always have to do that adding or subtracting before you do any multiplying or dividing. But instead of just saying that, I want to actually kind of like write out rules that will work not only for just these two steppers, but will work when you start doing exponents, when you start doing parentheses, and start doing the really crazy stuff. If you learn it the right way one time. So the first thing is that when you're solving, the order matters. So I'm going to do order. How you figure out the order is this. We have the please, excuse, my dear Aunt Sally, so I'm going to do P for please, E for excuse, M and D one above the other for multiplication and division, and then we have addition and subtraction. Normally, if you're trying to get like a number answer, you have a whole bunch of jumble of numbers, what does it equal? You always do parentheses first, then exponents, then multiply, divide, then add and subtract. Agreed? You go left to right when you're trying to get a number answer. But we're working backwards. We're trying to figure out what was x to give me this number at the end of the problem. So we have to work backwards. So we first have to do our adding and subtracting. Then we do multiplication, division. Then we do exponents. Then we do parentheses. So it's backwards. So backwards when solving. It's supposed to be solving. For a variable. So if you're trying to come up with like x equals something or y equals something, you have to do your adding and subtracting first and then you can do multiplication division and then in future years down the road you'll start doing exponents and next and then parentheses after that. Good? So that's our first kind of like rules. What order do you do them in? And now the rest is really kind of a repeat of what you had before. I'd write it down just so it's all in one spot in your notes. Uh, but to undo something, you do the inverse to both sides. So to undo something, comma, do the inverse. And we had said that the inverse is kind of like a lot of people think of that as the opposite. Technically, it's not. But do the inverse to both sides. So what's the inverse of adding 7 to both sides? Just shout it out this way. Yeah. Subtracting Subtract seven. Yeah. Seven. So if you have an x plus 7 equals 42, then you're going to have to subtract 7 to undo the adding 7. So my first example is I'm going to say solve for x. Put a little colon. Here's my equation. 3x minus 6 equals 45. So there's some number that if we multiply that number by 3 and then subtract 6, we end up with 45. We're trying to figure out what is x. What number is gonna, could we put in there to get the 45? Fair enough? So first step, if we go back to our rules, is we have to do order of operations backwards. So we're going to start out by doing adding and subtracting. So the 6 is connected by subtraction. So, so they minus 6. We need to... Plus 6, perfect. Uh, so I'm going to add 6. To keep it equals, if I add 6 to the left, I have to... Add 6 to the right. Perfect. And now when I do that, my minus 6 and my plus 6 cancel on the left side. That just leaves me with a 3x equals 51. All right, so we want to get x by itself. x was multiplied by 3. The inverse of multiplying by 3? Divide. Divide. Good. So we undo multiplying by 3 by dividing... And on the left side, the two threes will cancel out, because if you time something by three and then divide it by three, those just undo each other. And 51 divided by three then gives me nice, 17. Second example, last one maybe, unless you really want some. I'm going to say solve for M. Throw a different letter in there just to kind of get you used to it. And my equation is going to be M divided by four plus eight equals 12. So m divided by 4 plus 8 equals 12. 
So we're st going to start by moving the 4 or the 8? Eight? 8, because it's connected by addition. We have to undo. So we're going to subtract 8 from both sides. So they added 8. We do the inverse of addition. We subtract. Then my plus 8 and minus 8 will cancel, leaving me m over 4 equals 4. I found in a problem like this, a lot of people say, the answer's 1. But what do we do to find the answer? M was divided by 4, so we have to multiply by 4. Did any of you look at that and think the answer is 1? Okay, maybe, okay, if you don't think about it. I do. I try to jump to the end. But, so multiplying by 4 and dividing by 4 cancel. So you're right on. 16 is going to be the answer. So M is 16. Do those seem to make sense? You'll have a bunch of time to work on it too. So I say just get started. And let me know if you have questions. If you're at all stuck, please ask. So.